Meyer was talking about this today. When you guys come in as a team and you'll watch five or six plays of the defense and five or six of the offense and guys sort of get to see the, the efforts and everything. I don't know, what, what is that moment like in the team room? Because I'm guessing probably right. I mean, the offense isn't watching you guys when you're on the field and mm. vice versa. What are those moments like and how do you guys react to the other side of the ball? Oh, I mean, we're always rooting for each other. Um, it's a good moment because it's after a win normally. We don't really show anything like that if after we lose. Um, so it's good to see what uh, guys on both sides of the ball get to do. I mean, defensive guys, we normally watch because we're always interested in what our offense is doing. Um, I'm sure they probably watch during the game sometimes here and there. We're not always talking ball on the sideline, but um, it's good. It's good to see, you know, guys making plays. It's good for, it's good to, you know, give uh, respect to other guys who are, you know, busting their tail to help us win. Is the offense impressed by the defense? Usually, what's, what's the reaction from the offensive guys of the defensive uh, plays? Impressed, I mean, I don't know if I would use impressed. It's just more of like defense did their job. Same with the offense. I mean, if the offense is somebody makes some really nice play, it's like, hey, they did their job. They did what they're supposed to do. Um, we don't necessarily make it an, a, a big deal, but um, it is what it is. It's just good to see some guys make plays and stuff. Darren, I don't know how much you know about Northern Illinois, but they've got a pretty potent offense. Um, what what do you know of them, and what kind of challenge will this be for you guys? I'm actually getting ready to find out, but from what I've heard, uh, they're a veteran squad. I heard they have a really nice little line. Quarterback can run. Uh, he can uh, sling it a little bit. Uh, just a lot of juniors and seniors. So uh, we'll just have to be on our game, really, uh, just like every other game. But uh, I'm sure they'll come in here, you know, ready to take a shot at us. So uh, we'll be prepared. Hey, their quarterback in particular, what stands out about him? Because they, they, he runs a little bit, but they like to throw it a lot. I mean, you know what I mean? What little bit you've seen of him so far, what stands out about him? Really, I haven't seen anything of him any? yet. I'm getting ready to here in a yeah. sec. But uh, just really of what I've heard from our coaches, uh, just that throw line, he, he, they protect him a lot, and he can he can sling it, and he can also run really well. So it's interesting to see what they have in store for him. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'll just learn more about them as the week goes on. Darren, as you go into a game, do you, do you go in expecting – to make plays, you understand what I'm saying? To affect things. I mean, what's your mindset now as you uh, as you go into games? Uh, well, it depends because normally I'm. It's just like we're out there with that group of guys. It's just it's truly really a lot of fun, like I said before. So I'm really thinking of like, all right, who's going to who's going to do it first? Who's going to do something first? That's kind of always for all of us. Who's going to lay somebody out? Who's going to get that sack? Who's going to get that pick? Uh, but really, it's just I've, what comes to my mind is just doing my job first. Um, and then I guess, you know, making plays will just come doing your job, I guess. I mean, I don't go out there being like, all right, yeah, I got to go do this, I got to go do that. No, I'll just do my job, play within our system, um, and then make a play, make a play. Is there a sense of responsibility on your part, though, when you're kind of set up, like, like you said, some things get called to feature you? <laughs> I mean, the, does that add to, like, your want to. You understand what I'm saying on a particular play? Like if I call? Yeah, like, like coming call, off the edge yeah. of the oh, I mean, fumble, you know? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in that case, um, I mean, say if he would have handed the ball off, I mean, try to make the, make a tackle. But I mean, hey, you hold the ball and it's a pass. You're coming off the edge, and yeah, go make a play. I mean, you know, doing your job, doing your job first, and then making a play just kind of goes hand in hand. I guess yeah. it's like, you know, if you're doing your job, your the coaches are putting you in a position to make a play. So. Northern Illinois was beaten. Position? Go ahead. Could you imagine playing a different position than you play right now? Do you feel like? It's the perfect thing for you. Who knows, man? I I, I really don't know. Uh, in a in a perfect I mean in a perfect world, you know, some days I think I'm an offensive player. You know, you know you had dreams as a kid. You know, maybe next Ted Ginn or something. But I mean, now that where I am now, I can't really uh, I can't complain. So I mean, no, I can't really picture playing any other position right now. Northern Illinois has beaten four Big Ten teams in the past six years. Do they? Are you? Familiar you with them? Do they come in yeah, here I've with heard, a reputation? Yeah, or? I've heard. Uh, even when I was still in high school, I saw them play big games and they'd win. I mean, they've had a pretty solid team. Uh, they're, they're in the MAC, though, correct? Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, I know they're one of the, if not the top team in the MAC. So I know they've been good for a lot of years. So um, you know, I'm expecting this to be a good game. Once I saw them on a the schedule, I was like, that's going to be interesting because they've uh, they played a lot of big games. They produced some pretty good players, and uh, they, I know they have a pretty uh, well coached team. With your mom working. This past Saturday, I, I heard that you were adopted by some of your teammates' <laughs> parents for the day. Is that true? And how much does that mean to you? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the uh, Buckeye Moms is what they call themselves. You know, that's a close knit group. Uh, and that's a lot closer than what people realize. Um, and it was a great feeling um, just to see you know a bunch of moms. You got to get your hugs. All the kids got to get got to get the hugs from the moms. And 
Um, you know, my mom was working that night, so, you know, uh, e Eli's mom and uh, Zeke's mom, you know, they took over the hug duties. So that's, that was a good feeling. Um, made me feel good. They nickname themselves? Doesn't that violate a rule or something? Buckeye moms? Like, I have no idea. I just, you there, know, you there gotta, isn't a rule you gotta let the moms do their thing. Okay, well, that's you know, you true. get in between that, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's bad, that's a bad deal. Darren, uh, Coach Meyer mentioned to us right after the game that he was, like, emphasizing enjoying the win hmm. and that he didn't want to let it happen that, you know, you win 38 nothing and you're thinking negative stuff. How much did he hit that with you guys as a team? Oh, yeah. he did. I mean, as soon as he caught down there, he's like, you know, not pretty, but a win's a win. Um, you know, enjoy it, celebrate it. Um, we know in the back of our minds that we did not play, you know, as an entire team. We didn't play our best. Um, but we don't panic. We don't really worry necessarily. It's just like, hey, we still got some work we got to do before we got to get to where we got to get. So, um, you know, just take it day by day. And now we're back on a regular routine schedule. I'm so happy about that. Darren, <laughs> uh, was there a sense Saturday, uh, not slamming anybody who was before, but with Joey out there, y'all were complete again? I mean, what, what was that sense like? in the defensive huddle, whatever you want to call it, mully gully, whatever y'all do before play. But, I mean, was there a yeah. sense that y'all were yeah, I the mean, group again? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the, the family was complete again is what we call it. Yeah. Um, and what does that do for everybody to – I mean, I mean it gets it, us wound up. I mean, now that we know that we could potentially be rolling on all cylinders now that we were missing, you know, a, a huge part of our defense, you know. Yeah. Um, it was it was good. It was just as a friend standpoint, it was good to see him back out there. I know he was happy to be out there. Um, no guy really wants to be sitting, you know, be suspended or miss a game or anything. And as yeah. a defense, you know, our chemistry is so tight and um, it, we just we vibe well with each other. So if someone's missing, I mean, you feel a little bit, and that's why the next man will step up. But when the regular groups out there, I mean, it's some. Do you remember the first time you got to show here that you could come off the edge, that you could make a play where you got people's attention? I'm talking about in practice or whatever, because mm -hmm. obviously you redshirted. Uh, do you remember that day or that week or something where you, you know what I mean, you became part of the plan? Uh, nothing really. I mean, because also we looked up, you were like running with the first team in spring ball that yeah, year. Spring, yeah, spring, it was spring last year. Yeah. I don't um, I don't really, really remember it. Well, what did you have to prove, I guess? I guess, you know. To... Oh, I mean, every practice in spring I had to, I felt I had something to prove because I was still competing for the job with Worley. Yeah. And um, I just felt like in every, any chance the ball comes your way, do your best at least, you know, do your job, but also try to make the play uh, just to be, you know, noticed. Um, I can't really remember anything specific of me coming off the edge. I remember a couple of plays here and there, just making plays um, here and there, but really coming off the edge, I mean, that's Coach Ash and Coach Vic. I'm sure they had a plan for that. Yeah. Now, so. Darren, uh, Kim Williams is a guy who's kind of been sandwiched between two five stars in Curtis Grant and Raekwon. Just how have you seen him, seen him handle that, um, and you know what's his approach like in practice in the meeting room and things oh, like that? Cam's got a Cam has a great approach. Cam's a great leader, also. Cam's the smartest guy in the room. Uh, I don't think anybody in the LB room knows ball better than him. Um, you know, he's the quarterback of our punt team. Uh, he handles a lot of that. He, he works the game well. Cam's been a great leader, um, and you know he always he's always teaching Raquan. You know, a little little pick up here and there. You know, he's just a, he's a great leader, great mentor. Honestly, you know, I learned part of the game from him also, so Cam's uh, he's been handling it well. Um, I don't think he really bats an eye at it. So. Hey, Darren, speaking of sandwiches, um, <laughs> you're good. Speaking of sandwiches, um, last spring it was you and Chris Worley who yeah. were going head to head to be that, to be in your spot right now, and obviously you've turned out to be what you've become, um, but that doesn't mean that Chris Worley isn't very good. Yeah, um, absolutely. What have you seen out of him since kind of being in a situation now where he's in between some really good players like yourself and some pretty young players and, you know, kind of has still the opportunity after you're gone to play a few years and be a starter here. But, I mean, what? how does somebody like that handle it? Um, there's not really much of a drop-off if I were to go down and Chris Worley were to come in. Um, really, if any <coughs> type of drop-off. Chris Worley is very good. Um, just a real, I guess, just a situ regarding situation. Um, I have no doubt in my mind if he were to go in a game, he's going to make just as many plays. I mean, it's, it sucks because, you know, um, you don't really get to see him a lot. I mean, we have a couple packages here and there, but um, that, you know, I think about it every now and then. I mean, I wish he was out there on the field with me half the time because it's a lot of fun. And you want to see a guy with a lot of energy, man. You got to see Chris Worley by, by I mean, far. That, how, that, that sucks to be him. I mean, but we, I mean, it, it like, I mean, we, I mean, part of our room, we eliminate the human element. You know, we don't put the, 
the whole jealousy factor and anything in route regarding that fact. But, you know, he, hand, he handles it well, but he does well on special teams, and we have a bunch of packages uh, to get him out there on the field also. Now, Urban always talks about, um, or at least when he's talking about the quarterbacks, what do you do with two good players? You play them, and mm-hmm. that's why there's still a quarterback situation. If mm-hmm. Chris is as good and right behind you, I mean, how – does somebody like that maintain a positive outlook knowing that, hey, there's somebody in front of me who's going to be taking the majority of the snaps and yeah. I have to wait my turn when theoretically a year ago it could, it could have been him? Yeah, you know? uh, I mean, like I said, the human element is just not a factor in the LB room. We always root for each other. You know, he's pushed for me as much as I push for him. Um, and like I said, we have creative defensive coaches, so they'll find a way to get them on the field. So we might most likely see that as the year goes on. But does, that, hey. yeah, does that competition drive you, though? I mean, does it? can you feel it paying dividends on the field? You're telling me that Absolutely. you've got a guy yeah. like that? You know? I mean, yeah, but I mean, it's more of like, I mean, that's my brother. Like, yeah. I'd been cool with him before we even got here. Like, I was in my senior year, late junior year, senior year of high school. I've been cool with him and uh, especially yeah. Gary on, too. Um, so we've we've always been tight. We've never really viewed it as like it's always me versus you. It's just like me and you just together. What is, what what do you see different about Gary on compared to a year ago when he was like a little undersized and whatever? I mean, he nothing. He seems to invite balls to be thrown at him. I mean, you know what, what what's different about him? Nothing really. I mean, that dude's always been like that. He's always been really that good, really? lanky, fat. Oh yeah, Gary was probably the fastest guy on our team. And what's up, G? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's the fastest guy on the team, and uh, jump. He can jump out of the gym. Uh, you play basketball with this guy. He's doing windmills, and I'm just like, I'm thinking, look, I'm looking at an NBA player. He can just, he's so athletic, and he's. I just say, if I could have to pick a difference, I'd be uh, probably just him learning the game, mm-hmm. um, and tackling for sure. Hey, Darren, he's a better tackler. Did Chris ever had a conversation about that? About just him staying focused, or no, never. Never had a conversation about it. Darren, since you've repeatedly brought up how tight this team is and how much fun you're having, could you compare that to last year, especially at this point? It's the same. Uh, I wouldn't say it was. In, it wasn't really like that on defense because I think we were still trying to figure each other out as well as seeing if the defense we had in was just really going to work. And we were still learning it, so it was really hard to have fun. We were still in the you know the learning stages, the beginning stages of the defense, and. You know, it's a new set of guys out there, so we had to develop a type of chemistry, and it didn't really come full mesh till the end of the season, really. Um, but now that we got, now that we know what we're doing, um, we know what to expect. Uh, that makes it, it makes it more fun out there with the guys, and um, it just makes it more natural, to know, so to speak. So, if you're ahead of schedule where you Gary. were last year, yeah. and you ended up as a national championship defense, what's the ceiling for this, this group? Oh man, ceilings. I mean, now that we know what we're doing, you know, keep just keep pushing, keep getting better every day. Sky's the limit, honestly. Um, there's always something to work on, and we always tell each other that every single day. So let's try to pick two things we can work on, and try to get better on that each day of practice. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll see. Um, I think we're off to a great start. Um, man, yeah, y'all ask some crazy questions sometimes. <laughs> Darren, uh, thank you know. very much. We'll see. So.